You know this voice, deep and resounding. With more law, Ndomba Zana on Radio 2000. It's our music, your memories. Uh, 60 minutes before 8 a.m. and around this time, we catch you out with all the tools to make your life as full and fluffy as it is, right? To navigate forward. Now, there's a lot of pressure on parents and kids toward the end of the year, but all around, as a parent, it doesn't matter what you do, you know you want to give them the best. So we've in, uh, invited, once again, uh, a specialist who has been on tribe before. Helen Hansen, who is a transformational facilitator, a registered kinesiologist, and a, an experience that is extensive in, in energy psychology. Uh, ultimately, she's worked with people from all ages, ranging from three years to 60. But in a recent focus uh, through conscious parenting, uh, she's really placed a focus on young children, okay, children uh, through the ages of two to seven, because we know that the foundation years are so pivotal. So Helen Hansen, so good, good to have you on the line from Cape Town. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Angela. Thanks so much for inviting me once again. Indeed, indeed. You hold so much knowledge and it's good to share it. Firstly, how is Cape Town? Because in isolated in Gauteng, it has been pretty cold winter kind of weekend. <laughs> You know, we've been so blessed recently with quite a bit of rain, Excellent. and I believe that we're getting some more tomorrow. So the past two days we've had sun, which is also wonderful as a break between the rain. But yes, it must just keep on raining, and Indeed. obviously filling up the dam. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Queen Mojaji, I'm sure that's a direct quote there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Helen, let's get into, firstly, I think, tipping on the point of conscious parenting, what that really means. I mean, ultimately, you're not saying that, uh, you know, the set of rules that parents follow should not uh, be followed or so, or they're disciplined. But ultimately, it's a, it's a way of adjusting and being mindful of your thinking about what your kid needs and decoding of what's really going on behind a child's behavior. Because I think as parents... We're so rushed, it's so easy to react, and then so uh, old belief structures come forth. Yes, and I love that you said belief structures, because <laughs> you know that really is the key, and that is what conscious parenting is all about. It's about looking at ourselves in this whole mix of this parent child relationship because the parent really is a parent um, and often grandparents and teachers as well depending how much time the children or child spends with each but all of these important role models in the child especially the young child's life yes. help to build the belief systems that are going to be there forever mm. unless they are consciously rewired so up until the age of seven from the time of conception, there are belief systems that are being programmed into the cell. So it really is crucial as parents to be aware of what are we doing, what are we thinking, how are we behaving, and is this how I would like to see my child react, respond the way that I'm doing now, mm -hmm. whether they are with you or not, because often we think, oh, well, you know, my child's not with me right now, so I can just go back to my old ways, but I'll be a good mom or dad when my child <laughs> sees. But the mm -hmm. thing is, it doesn't work like that, yeah. because what is in our cells um, and our brain and our frequency is emitted anyway. So when we are even in the other room, for example, right. our child is picking up on that frequency. So let's say, for example, it's the same like television set or a radio or even a cell phone being on in another room. Mm. Your body picks up those waves and it reacts to that on a cellular level, on the brain level, on a physical level, on all different areas. And if you were um, wired up um, to different brain or physical research machines, you'd be able to see the difference and, and see the reaction that the body is having being around these different transmitters. And that's what we are as people. We are transmitters. So think about what do I want to transmit to my child, even when my child is there or not. So that's why I would say, you know, parenting is really, it's a way of life mm. that one embraces when one becomes a parent. So it's not about 
the child is born and now suddenly are we going to fit the child into our life, Absolutely. it needs to be a holistic interpretation of how can we all now together transform to create a life and an environment that's going to be beneficial for everyone. It's not just when you're doing homework, when it's bath time, when you're feeding. And I know that kids are so susceptible to pure energy, as innocent as they are. Beautifully said, beautifully said. And it, we've also said before, it is kids don't do as you ask them to or as you say, but they do as you do, as your actions, right? So if you're reacting in anger, they certainly are learning these patterns. They do, you know, and again it comes back to this time of when the brain waves up until about the age of seven, they are, as we would describe them, asleep still. So they're in either the theta or the delta state, mm -hmm. and the child is really in this, this dreamy state, and that's where they need to be, but this is the time that the recording is happening. It's like a video camera is there inside the brain and it's just recording everything without judgment, without discrimination, and everything is going in. And then, of course, it comes out. And when does it come out? That is the question. So we are the mother, the mother computer, <laughs> distilling all the information and downloading as it all begins. Now, I know that you've deal, dealt extensively and uh, your work through various subjects to inspire educational activities that obviously will assist um, the whole bond and the development of children between two and seven um, through the developmental level. Uh, and you cover topics like uh, imagination, movements. Let's quickly talk about those two uh, briefly because... I think in the world uh, that we exist in and the, the schooling that our children go through, sometimes imagination is, 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 is put a lid on a bit. And the idea of movement is not understood as as important as the work to be done. Definitely. <clears throat> that is really, excuse me, <clears throat> I've got a morning voice coming out here. It's all good. We've got fun <laughs> <all> over. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's crucial to develop the imagination as a young one because, you know, this is the, the time that it, it is so rife and so active and you just have to look at the way that the children play. And that is the right brain just wanting to bubble up and bubble over. And when we allow that to happen, what we are giving our children is that experience at the end of the day of a whole brain integration. Because our world and the school and learning is often very left brain focused, which is fine, but mm. we need that right brain integration as well. This is going to help with the IQ development, with comprehension and things like conceptualization when they get to old the levels in school. So one must remember as parents that when our children are playing and we say, oh, they should be doing homework or they should be <laughs> doing this or I need to sit with them and I need to teach them something, don't worry and be assured that free play for children, you know, throughout the primary school, up until the end of primary school, is so, so important, unstructured, and also to have some time every day to have free play alone. This is their work. And it is fundamental building blocks which is going to help with literacy, with math, and with all these things that we as parents want our children to thrive in. And then the same with movement. You know, the gross motor development in the young child is their way of exploring the world around them. They're new to this place. Absolutely. And they need to explore Experience this new, this new home of theirs with all these senses, and they do that with the touch and the feel, and the, the the running and the rolling. And so we can encourage this by experiencing it and exploring it with them. So get down on your hands and knees with your child oh, yeah. and <laughs> have fun on the ground. It's Sunday, you know. Go outside or go into the lounge or roll on the bed and. The children have so much fun. It releases endorphins. It creates that oxytocin in the body, which is that wonderful warmth, 
bonding between different um, members of the family. And with a young child, they learn the best and the most easily from the parents. So parents, please, please spend a few minutes every day playing, playing with your wow. young child, not only just talking, but that movement. And for those of you who've got older children and, you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's going into exam time, yeah. this Time we need movement, even when we think, oh, we don't have time to do sports or extra Absolutely. running around. It's going to help the brain. So give your child that opportunity to integrate both into their life. Beautifully said. Movements, you know, a key focus. Get that blood flowing. Get the oxygen going, because uh, then ultimately studying in, in parts will assist the whole family. Ultimately, you refer to intuition, which I like very much, and and a quote that I picked up from some of your material um, in a book that you've written says, "Intuition is the new physics. It's an Einstein seven sense practical way to make a tough decision." Uh, from Tom Peters, and this obviously enables one late in life. Talk to us very briefly as our time is running out on intuition and the importance of it? Well, you know, as you rightly said, it's, it's not focused on so much anymore. But when we look at young children, they are just so connected to themselves and knowing exactly what it is they need. Mm. When they need to do something, they will do it. When they need to um, say something or express their feeling, they will do that. And it is part of that it's an innate intelligence that we all have. But again, coming back to the left brain society that we live in, it gets quietened a lot. It doesn't go away completely, but we don't develop it. But we can develop it in our young children and ourselves through right brain stimulation. For example, mm -hmm. get out some um, paper and crayons or pens and just do abstract drawing. This enables the right brain to be active, doodling, not working with a specific picture, or if you want to, work with an upside-down picture, mm. you know, so <laughs> do things out of the box, and that is going to stimulate the right brain and going to stimulate your um, intu intuition, which is going to, as well, help to cultivate those states of IQ development, of um, conceptualization, and all that we require for our children, you know, later on in life. So it starts in the formative years, providing this, this cushion for their future life. And we can also encourage this in our children by acknowledging their feelings. So not to say, um, you know, it's okay, um, don't worry, or trying to quieten it down. Listen to your child's feelings because that's part of the intuition coming through as well. That is so critical. I love that you've said that. Listening, listening to their feelings, allowing them to express. Uh, Helen, you work through a variety of fields and uh, through developments from, and I love the application of whole brain learning because we are of a coming of age where the integration of right and left brain hemispheres are critical uh, later on in life and, and with this new emerging world. Uh, but for our listeners, if you want to really capitalize on your listening skills as a parent, your social interactions, communication, self-calming respect, sharing the senses, imagination, creativity. It is also not just only about the child, but we learn through our kids as well. Helen Hansen, you have a very informative um, a website. I know you do workshops. Where can people get hold of you? HelenHanson.coza, which is H-E-L-E-N-H-A-N-S-E-N.coza. And there's a lot of information on there. So whether you're wanting one-on-one -on -one consultations with me, whether you feel that, oh, you know, I need to change a certain pattern that's happening with my child or with me as a parent, mm -hmm. I do either face-to-face -face, but also a lot of Skype consults with clients Excellent. in Johannesburg as well as globally. And then, of course, there's my latest book, which you can use as a go-to. I have loads of different activities for parents of young children to reference in there and to incorporate in their everyday life. And it's not just for parents, it's for anybody who works with children, teachers, child care givers, our pairs, 
etc., etc. So, yes, visit my website, join my newsletter. You'll get more there. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Helen. When you're up in Josie, we'll be thrilled to have you in the studio, uh, perhaps particularly if we uh, start off a new year. Thank you so much for your shared knowledge and your valuable input. Have a super stunning Saturday, uh, Sunday. <laughs> I'm still on Saturday in the Mother and City. you too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Helen. All right. There, you, there it is. Okay, to enable all parts of new learning. Helen Hansen. Tabumluli, wonderful life. It's only years if you apply yourself. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Just look through the different lenses. Our music, your memories, taking you up to 8 a.m. news. Good morning.